Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming, an absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction for people who don't know anything about The Lost Girls. What can they expect? Um, so The Lost Girls is my latest film. It's coming out in England and America and Ireland on June 17th, this coming Friday. So I'm really excited about it. It tells the story of four generations of Wendy Darling. Not Wendy Darling, sorry. <laughs> four generations of mourning. Um, it tells the story of four generations of women descended from uh, the original Wendy Darling and Peter Pan and takes off from where she is uh, now a very old lady uh, played by Vanessa Redgrave and she tells the story of how she met Peter Pan and how this will happen to her granddaughter who's also mm -hmm. called Wendy. And so for this, according to this family tradition, all the women in this lineage will meet Peter Pan when they hit puberty and they will fly away with Peter and then they will come back to reality and they will have to break the promise that they make to Peter never to grow up. And in fact, they will have to grow up and, uh, and, uh, and see what likes, where likes life takes them. Mm. And I just love this complete reinterpretation, obviously, of a story that pretty much everyone will know and recognize Peter Pan. Um, but, you know, was it um, Laurie Fox's book that you came across first? And so can you just talk a bit about that and how you, and when you read that, you decided, you know what, this is going to work really well as a feature film. Yeah, so... Um... You know, as you said, everyone knows the story of Peter Pan very well, but is what is not um, just um, just well known uh, is the last chapter, which was actually written by J. N. Barry, and it's called "When Wendy Grew Up: An Afterthought," <laughs> and uh, that was added to the. Mm, 1911 edition, and it wasn't always printed, um, and in that chapter. Peter visits Wendy and she has grown up and she now has a daughter. And so Wendy has forgotten how to fly and she can't, you know, she can no longer go be Peter's mother with him. And so in the end, Peter is desperate. And in the end, he takes Wendy's daughter and then he will take her daughter and then he will take her daughter. And so it will go on forever. Mm -hmm. So Laurie Fox first and me after her, mm -hmm. You know, we we were very inspired by this chapter, which is quite controversial if you think about it. And it's also extremely moving. It's very, very beautiful. Um, and we were inspired by that specific chapter. So, and from there, um, you know, we basically focus on the more problematic parts of, of this, you know, going back and, 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 and taking the daughter and then the daughter and then the daughter and, um, and asking them to be his mother. <laughs> and, um, and that, but if I have to be honest, when I first read the book in 2003, that wasn't the first thing that, uh, you know, I, I wasn't so conscious of all this uh, aspects of the story. I was just very taken by Laurie's story and uh, the, you know, the ups and downs that obviously the book covers a longer stretch of time and it's, it's actually darker than the film. And, um, and I was very resonated with me because you know, I had problems growing up, like the majority of teenagers, I guess. And I was really struggling as a young adult to figure out what, you know, who I was gonna be and how I was gonna deal with, with, with this world that demanded things from me that I wasn't prepared to, 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 to put up <laughs> with, really. So, so that's what resonated with me at the, you know, 20 years ago. And then when I decided to turn it into a film, uh, you know, I had to, I had to look at it with different eyes and see, you know, what, what was interesting from a different perspective. And I just love the fact that it takes, yeah, this well-known known story, but perhaps it's true that we don't really sort of dig deeper or analyze, um, you know, like the fact that 
Peter Pan ultimately was abandoned, you know, in Kensington Gardens or whatever it was. Um, and, you know, this thing of wanting to forget his mother because it's so traumatic. Um, and then you've got the theme also of kind of, you know, uh, the, the contemporary feminist lens of, well, not everybody, uh, you know, not all these women want to just be there to kind of serve and Peter Pan be entertainment for him, look after them. So it's just really interesting to kind of unpick all these things that we don't think about when we have these fairy tales that get retold and we see remakes of the films and so on and so forth. So was that something really refreshing to you to bring that to screen? Yes, yes, definitely. Like for me in the book, that was, uh, you know, that really, I mean, I was, I was always um, very interested in like hidden meanings of fairy tales. And, you know, I had read <laughs> like books, like academic books when I was younger. And, um, and so, and, and with Peter Pan, I mean, we've seen it before, like uh, even in Finding Neverland, there is definitely a, a, like a, this sense of longing and this sense of like this darker. Um, and then, you know, if you go into like the, Peter Pan, Peter Pan Encyclopedia or something, you know, you'll find all sorts of really, really dark, <laughs> like stories that like all the brothers eventually died. Like, I, I mean, I'm not even going to get into that because I don't know. I didn't, I haven't verified uh, the, the, the actual factuality of this, but, but there's a lot of, um, you know, we basically, this story became a lot of the stories that we know have become popular thanks to Disney, which uh, I absolutely adore. So it's 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 fine, but obviously that is a real simplification of the story. Um, and yeah, exactly. We forget that at the at the core of Peter Pan, at the core of Neverland, there is this sense of longing and wanting to forget uh, something something really horrible that you know happened to this young boy. Mm. and, and all the lost boys mm. and to all the lost boys i have to come to your really wonderful wonderful cast i mean vanessa redgrave you know what what a you know a legend of the screen um and theater um so starting with her but also the rest of your cast and i just love how you know it's all these different generations of women and you know seeing all their different perspectives um and the fact that you've managed to put all these incredible actresses together you know it must have been so wonderful on set as well yeah so um i have to say i'm just as amazed as everyone else that i got to work with this amazing cast um and uh, you know that they wanted to do the film and um you know, I guess they like the script enough <laughs> to, to wanting to, to, to be part of it. Um, so Vanessa was um, an inspiration. Uh, it's something that I keep on thinking about this woman that it's just so, you know, this is an old lady that is putting herself out there, like really acting. And even just the fact that she has to remember the lines. I have a hard time remembering anything these days, you know? <laughs> um, and, um, and Jolie, I think her performance is so, um, I mean, I wanna say so natural, but like, it's so um, sort of understated and intimate. Uh, that I really, I really love it. And I personally think this is, this is in the Lost Girls that I love Jolie Richardson. Uh, I think it's a, some of her best work for my taste. <laughs> um, and then Ian Glenn, Ian Glenn, I was immensely grateful that he, you know, decided to do Hook because our Hook has a bit of a, uh, um, you know, it's a predatory character and it's quirky and it's, and it's, uh, it, it's weird, but it has that, you know, strong predatory element. Um, and so it was, you know, it was important to find an actor that wasn't going to shy away from playing that. And Ian definitely did not shy away because he's such a pro. Um, and I think he did a wonderful job. And then I want to say something about the younger cast because I think they're just as shiny <laughs> um, and uh, 
yeah, it's an it's a real it's a real ensemble piece, mm -hmm. and I think everyone is really um, is really good in it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about the look and feel of the film, um, and you know this this kind of um, topic of uh, what do you call it hyperfantasia, and and this kind of blurring of you know what's imagination what's reality um but how vivid you know the their imagination saw each of these women what's dream what's a memory um and how you've kind of used you know um the visual tools of of cinema making to kind of represent that but there's also a light-heartedness for it like you said even though there are these kind of darker themes there's there's kind of a fun and lightness to it as well so maybe we can talk a bit about that yes thank you so um you know, we shot the film at the end of the first lockdown in England in the summer of 2020. So, the, you know, originally we were going to shoot Neverland in the south of Italy. You know, there were like, you know, New York. There was <laughs> there was a whole big plan. And then uh, and then, you know, I just really wanted to make the film and we had the opportunity to do it then. Uh, but I think it turned out really well. So. For the Neverland, I wanted to have this, you know, sort of pink palette because it, it's the idea of what is um, what is appealing, what is a dream in a young girl's mind, mm -hmm. and it might be just, you know, a little generalizing, but you know, I think that for me, you know, hearts and flowers and unicorns and pink was a big, was a big, uh, you know, I was very drawn to this type of imagery. And uh, um, I was actually thinking yesterday, the colorist did an amazing job. I was, you know, this is very technical, but I was actually thinking last night, I'm like, the colorist was really good with that because obviously, you know, the sky wasn't always pink, right? Um, and then, um, and then we had this uh, sessions that were more like extreme, right? Um, either the flying or, um, or, or when we see adult Wendy going back into Neverland. So that's a different feeling, right? Because what's wonderful when you're 13, you know, it might turn into a bit of a like distorted uh, if you find yourself in the same place at 40 or 25 or 30. Um, so for that, we use different lenses and um, to give this sense of like more almost hallucinatory uh, feeling. And also um, with the VFX, there is an aspect that's almost like cartoonish um, where I mean, part of it was technical <laughs> due to the necessities, but part of it was also like, is this real or is this not real? Is it clear that this isn't real, but then all of a sudden it really does look real. So we wanted to play with that. And ultimately, what do you hope people will take away from watching it? Because like you say, there's just all these themes that run through it, you know, how, some people don't want to, to grow up, but then you feel you have to, you know, if you do have a vivid imagination, are you seen as crazy? Um, uh, the pressures on women to become mothers in, and that conflict of holding on to their identity and not wanting to give that up, whether that's career or, or something else. Um, but, you know, what do you want people to take away overall? Um, I, I always say that I think, I, I hope this movie stays with people, that it doesn't just, um... I think it will like you might you know you might just like be like okay whatever how uh, that was whatever it was but I think it will come back <laughs> I think we'll come back and come to you no I'm just kidding um but I, 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 my desire would be <laughs> for this film to stay with people to, to to stay um you know to 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 make to ideally to make to make you as a, an audience member look at things slightly differently. Mm. And of course, here you've been, you know, producing, writing, directing, as well as starring in it. Um, so <laughs> what was that experience like for you? And where do you think you'll go next? Is that something that you're gonna try and do again with, with your next feature? Or are you gonna go and move on to do something different? 
not with my next picture, but I'll definitely try and do it again. I'm pretty <laughs> sure eventually I will do it again. Uh, I'm not like dying to to throw myself into such a you know vortex, <laughs> but uh, you know it's an intense experience and it takes up a big you know a few months of I mean filmmaking takes up you know a couple of years of your life, uh, mm-hmm. but if you're acting and directing. Uh, it really you, you really have no time to breathe really for about you know at least two months mm-hmm. um and it's so intense like and if you don't have time to 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 exist as as uh you know as a person <laughs> for two months it's really like going to a different dimension so I'm not eager to do that right away you know you kind of need a lot of recovery time uh but I'll, I'll probably do it again at some point um right now um what I am and for the lost girls I really wanted to do that and I had done that before in my first feature and I also had done a short film where you know I'm, I'm the female but like I'm the love interest kind of thing in that one it's like a smaller role um <clears throat> um so in this, in this, in you know, looking at what I'm, I'm, I'm I want to do next, um, I'm looking at a a couple of projects that I did not write myself uh, because I do. I would like to uh, explore directing in a more um, sort of uh, separate way, like just you know, just just approach directing and and see. Um, how I do with that (laughs) Um, well I think it'd be like less you know also having a little bit of separation from the material Mm. not having it be so personal that it's like written and then written for yourself and then written on a book that you've been holding on for 20 years like I just want to work with something with a bit more uh, distance Um, and uh, and then I have a story that I have a book that I am adapting, and uh, there isn't a part for me <laughs> in that book. So I'm, I guess I'm really um, guided by the the story in this uh, in this project. Um, the protagonist is a young girl, and um, I just love it. I, it's a, it's a book by Milan Dressler. It's called The Last to See Me, and it's a ghost story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I think I'm over my time, but just very quickly, I just wanted to say, you know, the thing that I find very refreshing about films like this is this is so much from a female perspective and, and like this multi-generation representation of female characters. So you've written and directed it. Do you feel that that, you know, things are shifting and we're seeing more and more opportunities to kind of like really delve into, you know, feminist perspectives and, and female perspectives on screen? Or do you feel like there's still a way to go? I, I, I feel that we have, we have moved forward uh compared to like 10 years ago let's say but i i still very much feel there's ways to go and uh you know i feel that uh, having to you know t- telling you know this book the last to see me also it's very you know female centric and you know it, it, it um, deals with the idea of like who gets to tell the story mm. why can't i tell the story you know like why is the man telling my story um that's in the characters <laughs> um so I, I still feel that um unfortunately we're very biased like society is very biased towards the stories and you know they're looking at you waiting for you to fail every little like it, it's just we're not getting used to a different way of telling the story and so that creates a problem um but you know I see it as a challenge and um, you know I really just I'm interested in doing this so (laughs) that's what I'm interested in and it's fine Mm. amazing well thank you so much for sharing all that with me um and I can't wait for everyone else to see the lost girls and obviously look forward to your future projects as well thank you so much Livia thank you so much nice to meet you thank you thank you very much cheers